Sharpless 2-239 is a star-forming region located about 450 light-years from Earth in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. Unlike other nebulae, this one is not dominated by these gigantic, massive, very hot stars that will flood the region with ultraviolet radiation and cause the entire nebula to glow like a giant uh, fluorescent bulb. We're seeing some of that here, but this particular region of the nebula is so dense and so thick that we cannot make out too many details in the optical part of the spectrum. But if you take a look here at the central region, these pink formations are the telltale signs of about a dozen sun-like stars. These are stars that are about the mass of our sun, and they are forming these beautiful tendrils as a result of jets of material that swirl around the stars and are ejected in a bipolar outflow. And if you look toward the upper right-hand corner, there's this oblong orange part uh, known as IRS-5, and IRS stands for infrared source, so this means that this is a very, very hot part of the nebula and when we bring an infrared telescope particularly in this case the Subaru telescope which is infrared telescope located at Mauna Kea things begin to look very interesting you begin to understand immediately why this is known as IRS-5 why this is designated a particularly bright infrared source you'll also notice that this bright knot of gas is a stellar cocoon to a newly forming star and the reason for that is because there are this there are these bright jets and you notice that there are actually two jets not one see when stars are forming they accumulate a disk of material that surrounds them and swirls and falls onto the star but some of that material gets shot out in bipolar jets well we see not one but two of these sources meaning that there are in fact two stars that are being born side by side we're seeing a nursery of stellar twins roughly the same mass uh, one would be closer toward us than the other, and that's why one jet appears to be a slightly fainter than the other. But these jets are quite large. They're about 1,500 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and the two disks are about uh, 40 times the distance of the Earth to the Sun from each other, roughly a little bit, long, a little bit farther apart, let's say, than the orbit of Neptune from the Sun. But it's a really neat example of how when we can look at a nice nebula like this, we can dig in a little bit deeper and we can begin to use our infrared capabilities to probe beyond or probe through some of the intervening gas and dust and watch stars being born.